Hi, this is Ms. Bahawk. Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast, where you can get fresh ideas for your training, nutrition, and lifestyle to immediately put to use. If you want to be a sexy 80-year-old and throw your grandkids around like basketballs, listen in with Marcus Philly, the creator of Functional Bodybuilding, and myself. We'll be talking about avoiding burnout, keeping your passion alive for training, and fueling your body and mind so you can look good, move well now, and for years to come. Hi, I'm Marcus Philly, and we're broadcasting from Revival Strength in San Rafael, California. So if you're local, be sure to come check us out. Revival Strength is where you can find our programs like Awaken Training Series and one-on-one coaching for athletes of all levels and ages, locally or anywhere in the world. We also send out free warm-ups, workouts, and more to our email list at functionalbodybuilding.net. So be sure to hop on there. We would love for you to take a minute to head to iTunes and give us a review. We value your feedback and we want to earn all five stars. Thank you. Vacuuming, getting out of the car, standing up. It's easy to take our ability to move for granted until it's taken away. Just like Marcus's baby daughter, the more ways you can move, the more freedom you have in life. Finding your own entry point into loving the way you can move will also keep you motivated in your training. Listen in to get inspired and take our five-minute flow challenge. Topic that you can really connect with too, with your b-boying and what you've been interested in looking at in you know, different movement cultures that are out there. And I'm super interested in it because of getting people to think a little bit outside of like performance, performance, performance. Like that's the only way I can actually improve in fitness. Um, And then of course, seeing my daughter, you know, develop her movement. Let's do it. We're recording. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, So (laughs) when I think of freedom of movement, yeah. You just said your daughter, I mean, watching babies move and you've had, you know, the opportunity to see like the actual development of going from like not being able to do anything to crawling to kind of standing to like squatting and just all these basic positions that in our community now, like we are focused on developing as adults. You know, there's been excitement around that for over a decade now. And then I also think of like dance that comes to mind for me because, um, it, it is movement and there's principles of movement within, you know, something like break dancing or b-boying, but then there's an element of creativity to it. Mm-hmm. That's like encouraged, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, it's not just this way of perform it with this technique, like keep this principle in mind, but let's see what you have, like layer your own flair to it, layer yeah. what you've learned within movement to that um when you think of freedom of movement what comes to mind for you shoot i mean just as you were talking like so many things were just popping into my head you know definitely watching my daughter in these first 11 months and i'll definitely come back to that that's one area that's freedom of movement um or how movement creates freedom for people so like like you said she started with like I lay on my back and if we left her in the middle of the room and left for five hours, we'd come back, she'd be in the same place because she can't physically move um, to being able to do what she can do now, which is get around the entire house on her own, explore every nook and cranny of our home, every drawer, you know, everything that's not locked down, like she can do it all. Um, and she can't even walk yet, but she can crawl and she can maneuver and she can pick herself up to standing. And I mean, just thinking like, you know, 11 months, like her world went from really limited to extremely free and so much freedom, you know, and we see that in, in aging populations where it's like, they're reduced in their locomotion, their ability to move, they're more sedentary because of strength issues and their freedom, you know, in life becomes limited and they rely on more people. So it's kind of, it's super interesting there. Um, uh, another thing that just came to mind as you were talking was, you know, in a, this phase of my life where I went through this like, you know, big spiritual growth phase um, in my early 20s, I used to go to these uh, these retreats, these like spiritual retreats with this group. And one of the things we would do 
um, was Ecstatic Dance, which maybe listeners listeners have heard of, maybe you have, but basically it's like you basically just <laughs> you dance with like like if you were gonna dance and there is no like way to do it right and there was no um, it's like you're just truly gonna listen to the the energy and the music and move your body to whatever that energy felt like and you just take away like any you know um, any self consciousness that you might have of people looking at you weird or like what's he doing he doesn't have good moves or whatever like just all gone and you just like shake your body we would do that like aggressively for hours and it was one of the most like freeing and enjoying you know and just like special things that we would ever do together and it felt incredible and um there was a freedom like just of emotion that just was you know expressed in that uh in that practice of moving physically just like so um just expressing through movement in that way yeah um that's actually kind of the reason why i got into b-boying like i want why i wanted to get into b-boying was because i knew from just like a couple dance moves here and there over the last several years like i had no you know uh, i had no experience with it i was not fluent in it whatsoever um and i noticed like that restriction within my movement so when it came to gymnastics or olympic weightlifting through those things, I felt, okay, I found some freedom here. It's like, there's some sense of flow when I'm doing this stuff. But if you asked me to like follow along with a class and be like, this is just the warm up in the B-boy class, just like, okay, kick, sidestep, cross your foot here, cross your foot there. It was just like my brain and my body weren't connected. Like there was something, and, and there were definitely a lot of limitations just like, whoa, I don't know what I'm doing. This feels really weird. Like even though I have the flexibility and mobility, to get in those positions, there wasn't that sense of freedom. Um, And the other thing, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I feel like I, it it hit me harder, this back injury that I had, you know, years back, it hit me harder because I had, I hadn't experienced a major injury when I was younger playing sports or anything like that. So when it did happen, I was super like shocked because at the time, you know, I was trying to be a fitness professional. I was teaching all these different classes that required me to actually move with the class. Mm -hmm. And then I had just found CrossFit at that time. And I was like in love with it, wanted to do it. And then all of a sudden I was like, I couldn't do any of those things. And getting, like you said, uh, be like that freedom being taken away where it's like, okay, getting out of the car was Mm -hmm. like, an event. You know what I mean? And just like these basic things, like even after I had fully kind of, um, healed technically and, and my numbers in terms of my lifts and stuff were coming back. Yeah. The one thing was vacuuming. So every Tuesday night when I worked at Lululemon, I used to vacuum Okay. and that motion would light up my back, even though I was so conscious of like neutral spine and just like good mechanics and posture. Yeah. It's just those little things. And, um, I mean, that's kind of what influenced or maybe started this trajectory of like wanting to explore the freedom within movement. I didn't know at that time, but Mm -hmm. looking back, that's like an event that really brought to light. Wow. Like just because I have this thing in my back, like I now can't do these day to day things as freely as I was able to. Yeah. I had a similar experience when I was 20, I think 20 years old in college and I had a pretty bad back injury as well. And man, it changed the course of like, everything I was doing physically at the time, you know, I went from being like feeling my best, looking my best to just like injured, not moving, feeling my worst, looking my worst. Um, the, the crazy part about it is that I hurt my back like a couple months after I had finished a six month internship with a, with an orthopedic spine surgeon. So I was trying to get into medical school. We did like this, you know, shadow a physician for X number of months in college. It was like an elective course at Berkeley. I, ch- I got paired with an orthopedic spine surgeon, basically somebody who like does, you know, disc removals and spine surgeries twice a week. And I would, I wouldn't scrub in, but I would be in the operating room with these, you know, to watch and observe. And then I had this back injury and like seeing all the stuff I had just seen, like all these people are like wrecked. I'm going to have to have surgery. Like I would just went down this spiral, you know, like 
I'm never going to be able to do what I want to do again, which at the time I didn't even like, it's not like I am today where it's like movement is part of my life. And I, I truly am so grateful every day I get a chance to move. Um, at the time it was just, I thought it was like something I really wanted to do, but I was so depressed that I was like, this is never going to happen for me again. Like I'm never going to be able to back squat again. And, um, yeah, I think injuries and pain around movement, uh, is something that people can, you know, a lot of our listeners can connect to and will be able to say like, yeah, that absolutely created this appreciation for the freedom of movement. Um, and then it's funny that like once the pain goes away, it's like people forget about it real fast. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, oh yeah, I'm good. I'm invincible. And that's like, oh, tweak. Okay, not invincible. Oh, I should have taken care of myself. Why didn't I do my, my stretching? Or why didn't I listen? You know, um, yeah. And then I was also thinking that, you know, as we're, you're, you're choosing dance as a way to explore movement that's outside of your comfort zone or that's not, you know, it's like, that's something that I think is, I really admire. And I think I wish more people would do it. It's like, what about trying some things that you're not good at? You know, like what, get yourself into a situation where you're kind of a beginner again with movement. Um, because once, once you have that moment of like, Oh, I have to, I have to like, I have to problem solve this. I have to figure this out through practice, repetition, through thinking about it, through study, um, in order to create that freedom for myself. You know, that was what CrossFit was for me. And it still is to some degree, but for, for a number of years, there was a, there was a heightened period of time where it was like, I got to figure out CrossFit so I can do CrossFit. Like all these people I'm watching do it. I got to learn how to do the, this, the, that, the muscle up, the aerobics, the lifting, the snatch, the whatever. Um, because until I, I can tell, until I can do it all at a pretty good level, then I'm never going to be able to just flow and just train in a flow state. I'm always going to have that one workout that just, you know, I suck at or I can't do or I really struggle with. But, you know, once so that was like a five year process, really. Um, and then most recently it was like, OK, really diving into the, you know, what is functional bodybuilding and expanding the movement uh, library, exercise library, because still training with weights and resistance is something I love to do. And it's like, OK, but now I'm doing like hundreds of new exercises on a regular basis and that's really enjoyable like rekindled a passion for movement because i just decided to explore different planes of motion and different exercises that hadn't been on my plate for a while and i i truly believe that's why a lot of people are resonating with functional bodybuilding so much so like they try something new it's effective in that it gives them a, a training response that they they they've become familiar with it, but it's different in that it's challenging them to move in a different way. And they're like, wow, I didn't know that doing something like this, that looks so simple could be so challenging and make me have to like adapt. I think of, um, and I think about this a lot, like why many of us got into functional fitness or this next level of fitness, pursuing something more than we were already doing in the first place. And, you know, maybe to a lot of people, they can resonate with, you know, that ready for anything, like that functional feeling of like, oh, I can go on a hike today. I can jump in and um, play basketball with my friends. Like that, that concept is coming to light for me more now that I'm like a little more outdoorsy and going on these hikes and feeling at jumping into b-boy class, like that idea. But I also think about like, what is maybe the, there's a framework of thinking that's required for you to, uh, be able to want to even tap into something beyond what you're doing. Because, you know, we mentioned b-boy, we mentioned, um, you know, uh, functional bodybuilding, but I think about martial arts. I think about even working, you know, kettlebell exercises, like people who are masters of like kettlebells, um, maces, like all of that stuff. You know, I think it's a cool thing to be able to jump into any one of those things and have a sh faster learning curve. So I've never messed around with one of those maces that you can rotate and, yeah. and stuff like that. I got to bring mine in to the gym. I got you two. You have one? I have two at home. 
Really? Yeah, they were gifted to me. But yeah, we'll bring them in and we'll both look like beginners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but like to be able to jump into something like that that's foreign, but it's still movement, yeah. right? It's still mimicking certain patterns that we may have played with in functional bodybuilding setting or mm -hmm. in a b-boy setting. And to be able to adapt to that somewhat quicker than yeah. the average person, like that to me is kind of cool, you yeah. know? And, and there's a certain framework I think that uh, maybe needs to have more dialogue around to be able to spark this type of interest with people mm -hmm. um, for, for, you know, the wider public and the audience, like something to maybe shoot for um, and to explore, to be able to tap into the stuff that's beyond just sets and reps and tempo within the gym. Because that's, of course, beneficial too, but yeah. stepping out of that. Well, I think it's beyond beneficial. It is, it is what gives you the freedom to go and do all those other things, right? And that's the way I kind of explain it to people. It's like I actually had my oldest brother was uh, – I had a conversation with him around, you know, the holidays. And something, you know, we were talking about his fitness and how he's, you know, been able to engage in fitness and not – over periods of time and been in rhythms and out of rhythms. And there was like, you know, something he said was like, I don't really like, I just don't like enjoy going to the gym. I was like, okay, but you enjoy playing. He play, enjoys playing golf. He would enjoy going and playing some hoops with his friends. He could just play for hours, he said. And I was like, well, what is going to give him the ability to do that for years to come? Like, you know, he's getting close to 50. Um, does he want to be playing golf when he's 60, 70, you know, 80? Uh, you know, I don't know when the last time he went out and played pickup basketball, but if he wanted to, you know, like I'm sure he could go out and play a little bit, but he might be the guy that's like pulling his hamstring in like the first, you know, pickup game because he lacks that training base to support it. And I think that, you know, both, you know, you and I are, we have a solid training base of years and then you go to b-boy class and you're like i can do some of this stuff and i can move in some of these ways and yeah it's totally a challenge and i'm by no means a master but the learning curve is going to be a little bit steeper for you uh because you know you're going to get a little bit more uh, adapted because you've got training base so it's like what's what's training for the sake of giving you access to certain things in your life and then of course within training how can we make that more enjoyable and connected to movement and less robotic and sets and reps and just you know like the old like workout mentality was like if i just go i just got to go and work out and and then uh, but people lost range of motion because they were not training you know effectively and anyway I'm, I'm going on a little bit of a tangent but there's certainly that point of like um you know training is the that's how we describe the part of your movement that is to set you up for more freedom later, right? You have to put in the time, you know, like uh, I'm able to do what I can do today, the freedom of my movement now, because I put in a hell of a lot of sets and reps training to become a CrossFit Games competitor. You know, I'm strong and I have the physique due in large part to the years of training that weren't super sexy and people weren't paying attention to, you know, and now I get to do all this fun you know, explorative stuff, you know, and change like the way I think about movement a little bit, uh, due in large part to just putting in that time. Yeah, that's so, um, I, I can even think of some people in the b-boy community who grew up maybe solely doing that and who, you know, it's, there's a lot of moves once you get into that advanced realm that require your shoulders, you know, there's a lot of demand on the shoulders. And many of these people haven't been exposed to weight training principles or anything really beyond just, um, you know, the stuff that they're doing on the dance floor. And shoulder injuries are very common and wrist injuries are a very common thing that show up in that community. Um, so I can see the benefit of uh, there needs to be that balance of both, you know. And there's uh, actually one of the um, one of our on-site clients, Sefton at Revival Strength, he was uh, telling us the other day that I think over the holidays, him and a group of friends went out to play pick up basketball or football. I can't remember which one it was. Yeah. But literally every single one of his friends except him 
got injured that day. Right, exactly. <laughs> except him. Like, <laughs> and it's, and I, I think it's because when you see him in the gym, he is doing functional bodybuilding. Like yeah. he's doing Russian step ups. He's doing Russian twists. Like he's moving in all these different planes and has yeah. some familiarity with, oh, this is, you know, this is what my uh, glutes are supposed to feel like. This is how I'm supposed to bend or squat and move. Yeah. And so now that he was put in that setting, it's like he was a little, you know, he was a little more resilient and oh, his totally. structure was a little more prepared. Yeah. I mean, gosh, that's, uh, it brings up a f- story that I remember from like when I was in my early years of coaching at a CrossFit gym, like I was training and I was like, okay, I want to, let's go do some sprints at the, at the, you know at the local high school field and I like talked all the trainers into coming like there were like five of us and I mean everyone worked out a bit but some more serious than others and some had a little bit more like you know robust fitness base going into it and I was in the more fit category of the group and yeah like the 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 people that trained less blew out their hamstrings the people that trained medium strained their hamstrings and then those of us that like you know train more like had sore hamstrings and I was like oh wow look at the grade of like you know you know people that are prepared for do- going and doing something like that which is a little outside of what our normal training day looked like we didn't do a lot of high speed running um yeah it's like y- y- building a training base for the thing that you want to do or or the thing that you want to go and explore is huge and Gosh, man, you should become like the strength conditioning coach for like high level b boyers like oh. that need like <laughs> shoulder structural work. Like you could just, you could give them such good programs just that Dude, are so so straightforward to get them like, you know, have longer careers. I need to tap into that because a lot of the people that are at this class I go to are apparently like international like level competitors yeah. and champions and like. Watching that in person was just a whole different game. Like sure. you know, I, I watch videos all the time, but seeing what they can do in person is like absolutely insane. And there's competitions that they're involved in yeah. from time to time. And you know, the guy who was the teacher, he wasn't able to compete at this next one because of this shoulder yeah. ding that he had. So I, I need to get on that. Totally need to. Well, and they need to get on it too. It's like, you know, any specialist in a sport, you know, or in a, uh, art, you know, artistic, you know, um, performance based, uh, you know, endeavor like b-boying or dancing or anything like that. Like there's, there are, there are patterns and repetitive motions that are certainly like, you know, come up for them and, and a, a little bit of support with some strength conditioning. Like, you know, you don't need to bring them in to do like thrusters but right you know some scapular stability work and some uh yeah would be super beneficial i mean coming back to when we were talking about noah Mm -hmm. that reminds me of like just body weight training overall and to me body weight training it's like what immediately comes to mind is what we do in the gym handstand push-ups dips put uh regular push-ups like anything involving just your body weight, air squats. But then you also think about there's b-boying. And then you also think about like the stuff that Edo Portal's involved in, where it's like this half martial art, half b-boy, half like just this combination of disciplines. That's just like a flow, animal flow type of thing. And I don't know, there's a connection between the two, like watching babies move and watching just high level body weight movement that you know, it doesn't get as much attention, um, as maybe the, the kettlebells and dumbbells and barbells do. Um, how do you feel? I mean, I, we see you all the time doing like archer pull up holds and all sorts of stuff. How do you feel about body weight training overall? I think it's, I mean, I think it's actually going to start to get more attention, certainly with our audience and, uh, the fitness, you know, world, because as you start to see people do things, body weight stuff at a high level, it's, extremely you know impressive and um you know with the rise of like american ninja warrior as a you know a television sensation it's like that's body weight that's body weight movement you know with really you know kind of flashy apparatus like that they're jumping around from um but yeah i think people are starting to pay pay more attention to it um and maybe in the, the you know the community that i've been in we've been in for a bit it's uh 
maybe been a little bit more focused on weightlifting because initially it was like people got really good at lifting really fast and the weights got heavier and heavier and heavier and, and that's entertaining and certainly draws attention and and then it was like okay now they're everyone's pretty strong everyone's lifting a lot of weights and it's kind of i don't want to say it's plateaued but it's not like you know there were certain years in crossfit where it's like 225 clean man that was great next year 275 clean everyone's clean in 275 oh next year if you don't clean 315 you're out of the game and now yeah. people are cleaning you know 375 380 a couple people through cleaning 400, but like 360 is like a pretty solid number. And now it's like, we're not going to see that jump up to 450 or 500, you know, unless people like literally dedicate all their time there. I, I just don't see that happening. The body weight, you know, abilities, I don't think have evolved as fast. Um, because maybe something else like lifting weights and aerobic development took a little bit more of like the attention. Um, but certainly now it's like, you know, who can do a press to handstand, you know, who can do an obstacle course walking on their hands? You know, uh, we got strict muscle up into strict ring handstand push up. That's a new element that got added years ago. So in the functional fitness competitive world, like those movements and those competitive movements are starting to raise awareness around it. And then as well, like, you know, Edo Portal or other movement specialists um, starting to gain more awareness, people seeing that. And I also think people just like appreciating like, oh, you know, lifting 400 pounds on my back, that like has a certain feel that people like, they feel viscerally when they watch that. They're like, oh, that, oh, that looks hard. You know, like, yeah. like it's contracting almost. Like you got to be so tight and rigid and that thing's going to crush me versus like seeing somebody do like a, a really cool like windmill or like, you know, press to handstand or balance on their hands or, you know, do a one-arm pull-up. It's like, oh, that looks, you know, that doesn't, I don't know that that has this, people have the same gut reaction to that as seeing a 400-pound squat. It's a little more inviting. It's like, oh, I, I could maybe try try that, you know, on don't put that weight on me, you know? Uh, right. So, yeah, I mean, my hope is certainly that it it starts to grow. I mean, I've had a ton of, uh, you know, found a ton of personal satisfaction out of exploring some of those things and, and then, you know, scouring social media and seeing people do stuff. And then, you know, yesterday, and I'm like, this is just a, you know, I'll share this story, but I went into the gym. I saw a couple things on social media, like a couple ring movements, gymnastics movements. I was like, oh, I'm going to go try that. And, you know, for the past six months, I've been experimenting with lots of stuff and I've been able to do most of it and all, pretty much all of it. And then yesterday, I, I, there were two exercises I saw somebody do and I was like, I'm gonna go do that. That looks cool. And I could not figure it out. Like I didn't have the strength for it. It was like too hard for me. I was just like totally defeated. I was like, my God, like I just, I just got shown up big time. Like I can't do this exercise. And, uh, it was actually pretty motivating. I was like, Oh, I got to I got to work on this thing some more. And, um, it's fun to find, you know, challenges that are kind of within your reach, not too much of a stretch and not too easy to kind of accomplish. Cause I, I think that just gives us focus in the gym. Yeah. That's, um, that's something that, you know, watching a, like when you watch Ido move or you watch uh, a break dancer move or someone who's a yogi, it almost, they, they make it look easy. It's like kind of watching a snatch, right? It's oh, yeah. like, oh, wow, that looks so graceful and easy. And chances are when you go to try that, it's a lot more difficult <laughs> than you anticipated. Yeah. Um, and then what I've been thinking about, like, I see people doing b-boy moves and I, and I love doing it myself too but I know that similarly that reaction you mentioned with back squatting when people watch that there's a sense of like whoa that's too that's out of my reach like I can't do that so being able to regress that stuff down to a level that you know somebody who has just stepped into the gym what is like a position they can master yeah. and progression to where they can work up to a level of freedom within their movement, you yeah. know, like quadruped, yes. plank shoulder taps. Right. And isn't that the fun of like taking new clients, putting them through assessment and then prescribing them exercise that actually get them to move better and increase their freedom of movement. It's like, Oh, like if I give that person a, a back squat, they're going to probably hurt themselves or they're just not going to 
they're not going to progress fast and they're not going to feel like they're getting better. You know, um, gosh, it was like just the other day, uh, Jeffrey, our client was like talking about how he's just like, he was, he was feeling certain things in his movement that he never felt before and motivated to try and fix them because he was doing simple exercises that he had access to, you know, and that's just, you know, that's so important in, in exercise prescription is, you know, really meeting somebody at where they're at, showing them a way to, not that they want to get to the 400 pound back squat, but showing them a way to get to the next stage, you know, and, and really just, Hey, let's do this, do it the same way for the three weeks. And, and then you're going to move on to the next thing and they can just feel it so quickly versus going the wrong direction, you know, taking them from A to D too quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, finishing off with, you know, kids and even babies, yeah. um, you know, my observation with, this was when I was competing in weightlifting and I watched teens perform the Olympic lifts. What I noticed was that them practicing at an early age, forget load, just practicing PVC and practicing the mechanics of dropping to the bottom of a squat over time like the freedom aspect that I saw there was that there's no fear when it comes time to add load, you know, when they're 13, 14 and they're progressing to doing back squats and actually doing mm -hmm. snatches with load. It's like, they don't have fear dropping into the bottom of a squat. Yeah. Like I did, you know, mm -hmm. or an adult that's starting at 20, uh, you know, in their late twenties or yeah. early thirties feels it's like there's no restriction there. There's fluidity and there's freedom. Um, is there anything else that, you know, I'm sure there's a lot, but anything that stands out to you from watching Noah move that you want to kind of highlight? Um, well, th what you just said totally resonated with me and actually a conversation I had with, with one of your clients recently, uh, Joseph, who was like, um, just, he's feeling so much more, uh, confidence and ability to move into his like squat pattern specifically just like it's like i'm really feeling confident to push myself down there or push myself he said and i said oh the weight and he's like no like go all the way down to the bottom of my squat like really push myself down there like really stretch my range of motion and i thought that was just like for him that was so profound it was like i can really move and explore my body and I'm doing it the right way and I've got a clear focus and a plan. So I'm not at risk and I can do this. And so, um, you know, that was really inspiring for him. And, and as far as what I've, you know, seen and things to add about Noah, it's, you know, her, we do these things at the gym as part of like sometimes our warm ups, like a flow, a hip flow or a thoracic flow or squat flow. We, we've got a few that we circulate around with our clients and certainly the coaches use them too. And it's funny. It's like when Noah plays on the ground in, or plays in the living room, her whole movement, like for 20 minutes is a flow. It is crawl up to standing, kneeling, knee, half kneeling, picking something up, looking behind her reaching to you know for the thing like rolling on the ground on her back kicking her legs back onto her stomach crawl again pick myself up you know climb on dad climb on it's just like flow 100 percent. and you know she has all that range of motion she has all that access to different positions you know she doesn't have all the strength yet but the positions are there the range of motion is there um the flexibility which affords her some freedom. And then she's just like using it every day. So it's not going to leave her, you know, until we introduce a chair when she goes to kindergarten or whatever, you know, whatever grade where she's going to ask, be asked to sit. And it's like, that can totally halt some of that stuff. So it's like, how do we continue to nurture that flow, that movement throughout many of the years of her life to come so that she doesn't arrive at her teenage years or early twenties, like a stiff, you know, board like most people do from you know years of kind of formal education i sat in a desk for so long yeah um i have two takeaways that i think would be interesting for people to mess around with after listening to this episode one is off of that flow concept you just mentioned what if everybody tried to put together a five to ten minute flow on their own. Like it can be anything, you know, anything you want to try. Like I can see it being you doing a Samson stretch into a pigeon stretch into like, 
you know, a push away or whatever kind of resonates with you, whatever you feel like your body needs in that moment, figuring out a certain sequence that's not robotic, just free flow and see what happens. That's one. And then two is being more observant of movement overall, like just different patterns. So yes, in the gym, what you're seeing, then what you may be seeing with your kids, what you may be seeing uh, on TV, like just picking up on something I've noticed with b-boying is like, okay, the squat pattern is really common. The zero position for which you are on the floor and you start other moves from is really a squat that you're doing on the balls of your feet. You're on your toes, your heels are lifted. So being able to connect like, oh, this is similar to a squat pattern, or this is similar to, I don't know, an upper body pushing or bending pattern. I think just starting to recognize those things, it can lead somewhere interesting. Oh, I totally think so. And to, to just add to that first, um, the first point, you know, people develop a flow and then do that as your first thing every day. I think oh. that as a morning routine and a morning ritual um, would be super powerful because, you know, it's go from lying down to sitting is like what most people do. And it's like, no, get some movement, get some flow, get some blood, blood moving around your body and energy. Um, and why not do it in a way that feels right to you rather than what somebody else told you to do? Awesome. Uh, well, thanks so much for listening, guys. Is there anything else you want to leave listeners with? No, thanks, guys. Get out and move some. If you've gotten something useful from this episode, we hope you try it out. And be sure to sign up for our email list at functionalbodybuilding.net to get our free functional bodybuilding workout and nutrition starter guide. We all know abs are made in the kitchen, so this will help you build some good habits and hit a few workouts while you're at it. You'll also get some weekly warm-ups and other great content, so head over now to functionalbodybuilding.net and sign up.